Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Slash and Spells by Burning Forge Games. This game plays two to four players, takes roughly about 30 minutes per player, and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game Slash and Spells, you are going to be playing a hero building arena conquest game. Your objective is to knock down your opponents. How to knock them down? Drop them to zero health, kick them off of the board, and make them then return. And for each knockdown you get, you get a point. And as you get more points, the game is going to progress from round one to round seven, and at the end of the seventh round, if you have the most points, you win the game. Each of your heroes are unique and have modular abilities. Some of them have summoned units and others have summoned spells, and they're going to be moving around the board utilizing actions and cards. The cards will turn into this kind of action management system as well. There's a lot of unique little things about this tw twisted arena combat style game that I will show you right now after I show you the setup, how to play, and then of course my review. To set up the game slash and spells, you're going to first take the main game board out and place it within reach of all players. You're then going to take all the encounter, the barricade, and uh, the different hazards and put them in a bag, shuffle them up, and place them down on the board uh, random, -like, random like. And then you're also going to take each of the relics based on either it's a two player game or three or more and put them down on the spaces represented. In a two player game, you will ignore all the pointed areas on the board, on the edges, and in a three or four, you'll place out all of the cubes. Each player is going to have a mark, knockdown marker, you know, place that on zero to start the game off with. You're going to deal out a random number uh, from the bag as well. It'll be one, two, three, or four. If you're just playing with a two player game though, you'll have one and two. If it's a three player game, you have one, two, and three. And that will determine not only where you start on the game board, those little numbers marked, but also where you're going to start on turn order. Additionally, you're going to start with a round one marker, take a little marker sword and place it on round one, and you're going to place the treasures and the unique relics, the powerful ones, on the spaces provided on the game board. After you've done that, that steps up the main game board, you'll then move on to characters. And of course, you're going to have a randomly selected character, Then the character is going to include not only a character deck with unique cards, as well as three starting cards with stars on the far right hand side, but also their own game board and and Matt. You're going to give yourself two white action tokens and place them on your action pool. You will also give yourself different colored tokens for your speed, your might, your energy, and your HP, which we'll use to track all those different stats. And you're going to go ahead and take your unique tokens for each character, there's one of each different color, red, blue, and yellow, and place it on your character mat. After you've done that, set aside the encounter deck, which will be uh, hidden or face down, as well as shuffle the item deck and place it next to the game board, and any additional tokens you might get from your different characters. Then you're basically ready to play the game Slash and Spells. Playing a round of Slash and Spells is very straightforward and simple, but with a lot of choice involved. Based on turn order, you will take turns, and it'll go from first all the way to fourth if you're playing with four players. On your turn, you can place one action cube from your supply onto your game board, or onto your player mat if it exists in action space, or in the bottom battle tactics slots if there is a sl slot filled with a card that has one of those slots that you can put one of your action cubes in. Basically take the cube, place it in the space, and do the thing. And there's a ton of different actions, whether it comes down to moving and collecting relics, or whether it comes to gathering energy, gaining additional HP, uh, discarding a hero card into the battle slot, and and then of course be gathering new hero cards. Uh, you'll be able to move to certain spaces and gain a light amount of energy, and then all of your unique battle tactics as well. Uh, additionally to, you'll unlock certain spaces in the game where you'll be able to place down your uh, actions and uh, you, in the different colored areas, the blue, the red, and the yellow. After you've filled, filled those spaces in with your relics of that specific color, you will be able to access those specific spaces and perform those abilities. But it's just one cube every turn. Place the cube and then additionally you can play any number of cards as long as you have them and can pay for them. To pay for them it's in the top uh, right hand side which is going to have an energy cost and uh, you'll utilize the energy that you have on your player board and you will spend it to play the cards. When you play the card you will do whatever it says on the top left hand side along with what type of spell it is. It's either a target or an area. If it's a target it's a single target. If it's an area it's the entire space that you're targeting. Uh, in the top left hand corner is going to have a range and an amount of 
damage you'll be dealing. And then after you complete that when playing the card, you are then going to do whatever the spell says. This one says to do four damage to a space that has the ice token on it. Pretty straight, straightforward, pretty simple. Whenever you play or discard a card, instead of discarding it instantly, you're gonna place it into your battle slots. And your battle slots are represented on the very bottom of your board here. So in this case here with Katoko, you're going to have battle tactics one, two, and three. And if I were to play one of my cards, and this is not really her card, but you'll get the idea. Uh, you'll play it, you'll do whatever it says, and you'll slide it under the mat. And then you're going to have a new action space that will let you move a space, and they'll all let you move a space. And in addition, they'll let you do the bottom text. Every time you play a new card, they'll slide over one spot until eventually they'll slide off and go into your discard pile. And so you're gonna be constantly getting new actions as the game progresses. And you'll be utilizing the cards in order to do that. After you've played your cube, played any number of cards that you want, provided you can pay for them, your turn is over and it'll pass the next player. They will play their cube, any number of cards that they would like, and then so on and so forth. After you have used all of your action cubes and everybody else has as well, that will signal the end of the round. At the end of the round, you are going to advance the round tracker. You are going to take any tokens and place them on the middle mount combat space, such as treasure tokens and or these really mythic relics here that are very useful. They're basically a wild, car, wild cube that you can place on any of the slots on your player board. Um, and then you're going to draw a hero card. Uh, which is from your deck. Normally you would do that by discarding a card and drawing three, but every round you get one as well. You'll also check turn order. Whoever has the highest energy is going to be the first player and it'll proceed clockwise. And then uh, finally, you're going to take all your action cubes from uh, the different areas on your boards and place them back into your reserve. After that, once again, starting with the first player, you will go ahead and continue the game. And after you've hit the round seven, that will be the last round of the game. And whoever has the most knockdowns is the winner. Now, how do you basically do everything? Well, I've explained that actions let you move, they'll let you do damage, cards will let you do that as well. Uh, each character has their own unique abilities that will trigger based on the cards that you play. Whenever you bring somebody's health to zero, you will move your marker on the knockdown track up one, signifies one victory point. Whenever a knockdown is, uh, happens, uh, that character who has been knocked down will be moved off of the game board. It goes into the special space. You'll randomly take a token to see where you spawn. Oh, a two. And on your next turn, you will go back to that space. Uh, you will gain two energy and then you will proceed by choosing a space adjacent to the hex, uh, hex point that you have selected. Uh, a couple other little no no things to note is when you begin the game, you're gonna start on a hex point. It's not actually going to be a hex. And as soon as you take your turn, you'll move off that point into any adjacent space. And also whenever you recover from being knocked down. And you're not going to be able to be attacked when you're in that space. So until it is your turn and you move off, you cannot be targeted. But once you're in a space, you can be. There's a couple other things to note too on the game board here. When you walk into an encounter space, you will flip that encounter over, find the correct encounter card, and then you're going to have to deal with a curse. If you do not defeat the curse, you will have it attached to your character, and if you do, you will get an item card. And item cards are basically bonus action cards that are used for free that do something unique and interesting in the game. You're going to have these barricade tokens. When you take damage on a space, you'll flip one of these over, prevent the amount of damage on the barricade, and then discard it. And then, of course, you're going to have these guys here like little obstacles. When you take damage on a space with one of these guys, you will flip this over afterwards and take the additional damage represented on the back of this guy and then discard it. The last thing to note too, it's uh, very, very important in this game are these relics here. Now they're placed along the board and whenever you take the only action in the game that lets you gather them, which is called sprint, you'll move your movement. So if I was here, I'd move my movement one and two, and then I would be able to select the cube and place it on my player board and it can only go on a space that is its color. The only exception to the rule is these special like mythic or rare ones that let you place them anywhere. Um, and that is going to unlock bonus abilities, bonus actions, and uh, unique things and concepts that will bring tokens into the game that represent your character or represent something that your character has. If you ever walk into a space with an encounter, you'll have to trigger it and you'll have to stop, so be aware of that. But you'll be able to collect after you have finished the encounter, regardless of whether you got a curse or whether you're able to defeat it and gather an item. And that's basically the idea of the game. There is a ton of information involved in each of the different characters. They all function differently. Like for instance, Nadara here, she's going to have an ice that is going to move around and hit people, a whirlwind or like a tornado that pulls people in and sucks different HP and energy from players. And then she's also going to have an illusion that lets her kind of like uh, warp around the field and also utilize spells as though she is her illusion and vice versa. Uh, really interesting character. But uh, there are six characters in total, at least what I have here for the 
the, the, the prototype here, and they're all function differently. Like for instance, the other one is Philofar, which is right, right over here. He is able to summon different minions, whether it be a void spawn or whether it be a fire, um, like a fire imp, I guess. And then you're also going to have the ability to summon Bal Balhazar. Balhazar is like this omnipotent god that you are going to try and bring forth into existence. And it has unique abilities as well that you'll be able to utilize. So it's basically a uh, minion type uh, necromancer and uh, so on and so forth. The other characters do different things as well, but they're all explained specifically, which I'll probably get into a little bit in my review. But for the most part, that's it. We're on through the seven rounds. Whoever has the most knockdowns is the winner. If you ever go past three knockdowns, you'll take one of these tokens for the fourth, and then you'll move back to zero, which will signify your points for the game of Slash and Spells. So Slash and Spells is a modular uh, hero building battleground arena tactics style game. It kind of reminded me of Adrenaline in a way, because you're gathering cubes to utilize abilities and playing a certain number of actions on a turn. Uh, you're trying to attempt to knock players down to gain victory points. But the characters here are definitely more modular. There's more things you can do. You can unlock certain heroics. If you play a hero once, you can play it completely different the next time you go about playing this game because you have a limited number of these relics on the board. And you might not be able to ascertain your ultimate victory mode or ultimate like heroic mode. So if I wanted to get the Ice Witch uh, from Nadara, I might not be able to get the, uh, I don't know, the Arcane Tricks from her as well. So I might not be able to use the full Illusion build, whereas I might be using the Ice build or vice versa. So there's three different paths. You're most likely never going to get all three paths in your game, especially with more players. It's going to be a little bit more competitive as to what you can get and what you cannot get. Uh, your cards are going to function differently as well. Some cards are going to just play as they are, whereas with Nadara's, whenever you play a specific card of a type, her ability is that you will be able to move one of her specific minions and or icicles and tornadoes and whatnot, so it can be kind of randomized a little bit. Um, and my character is going to allow me to move my minions around the board and do certain things, whether it be suck away life or energy or do specific types of damage and some of the big baddie boss uh, my guy also was pretty cool this guy was able to uh, gain skill tree points and climb up the ladders making my character stronger up until the point where i summoned him giving him nine life and bringing him to the board to just start doing some serious damage uh, which you can use uh, sometimes characters that they have hp they can be destroyed like for instance balhazar is a character that can be killed or something like the ice or the tornado or the imp are not able to be destroyed because they have no life but they are not necessarily necessarily something that's going to instantly down you like maybe Balazar might. Um, and that's pretty much the style of the game. Moving around is very simple. You're going to be taking an action and there's a bunch of different actions. You at least get six to start with, maybe more depending on the character you are. You can unlock three more on your main board. You can unlock more on your secondary player board. And then there's three additional ones that come forth with your cards. So you're constantly going to be changing the different actions that you have available to you. Whether you play the card for the energy cost and get both abilities or just attach one of your cubes to the bottom portion on your battle slot and utilize that last spot you're going to be constantly having different things that you can do, changing your strategies, changing your tactics, determining how many cards you really want to play because you'll potentially lose battle slots that you might want to utilize. And of course, maybe you want to get rid of certain cards to gather more in your hand. For me personally, I typically enjoyed playing the cards more than actually using the action slots on the cards. Most of the time for me, I liked to use Sprint to gather new abilities and utilize my player boards. Now, I played with these two, obviously, Nadara and the Felifar. With Nadara, I like to play the cards to move things and then, of course, use their special actions, the ultimate actions, as opposed to the battle slots. Mainly for the cards, I like to just simply drop them out. I don't think I played a single slot in my, my two games that I played with these characters here, but they were used and people did play them. It just wasn't specifically my strategy. And with my other character, it was all about summoning units and moving them around the board. I was always trying to summon Balhazar because he was really cool and had a really powerful ability. But no, you only get two actions and you can only play, only play one action a turn. So cards is going to be your main advantage throughout the game. Uh, that being said, the gameplay is a lot of fun. It feels like arena combat. You get knocked down, you get up again, ain't never gonna keep me down kind of thing. You're, you're constantly downing people, you're, you're downing, you're, you're getting downed yourself, and you come back to the board right at the, your next turn, back onto a slot, you move onto the side, and then you go again. There's like almost no downtime when it comes to characters being knocked out. This is not elimination. You're not gonna have to lose a turn or skip anything. It just simply means that you got knocked down and somebody got a victory point, and that's the way the game is going to work as far as who gets the most points in the game. Uh, the encounter spaces are okay. They're pretty cool. There's curses. You can get up to two of them. They can be kind of debilitating if you cannot 
defeat them. You want to be careful when you move into a space with one of those things. People can push you into them and it can affect you negatively. And of course, these little ones that either give you or reduce damage for you are a nice little additive as well. Not something I really much, I didn't really like bother going into those spaces for the protection or to stop myself from taking the damage because people are dying constantly in this game. That's kind of the point. But I did focus on avoiding encounters unless I had that max movement speed or if I wanted to specifically get an item card, I might go ahead and fight one if I can't defeat somebody else because these item cards were actually rather useful in the game. I love the fact that the characters function differently, feel differently, and even when you play the same character more than once, you will have a different game mode as well. Quality of the game. This is a prototype, so it will be different when you get your copy of the game, provided that you back this game. But what I have here is excellent. I love the miniatures. I love the little standy, little standy characters here. They look great. They're very colorful. The whole game board is colorful. It's easy to understand and easy to read. There are some minor graphic design errors, I would say, on certain characters. I would like to say, for instance, the Lord of Fear. Um, there is two abilities, and if you do not look at the very bottom text, because it kind of looks separated and, uh, and part of something else, uh, you might miss it, but just little design, designing graphical errors I think could be changed or clarified to make a little bit more sense, um, and maybe even some more additive explanations or an FAQ in the rulebook, which I imagine will be added as well, because each of these characters are very unique and also can be quite complicated, and there is a complexity tracker on your sheet. So when you take your sheet, you can look on the other side and it'll tell you how easy it is to play or how difficult. And that's, uh, it's pretty fair as to which ones are more complex than others. But I just like more clarifications in the rules as far as those go. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's great. It works well. I understood everything as I read the rules. The rules were fluid and very easy to grasp. And uh, we had a fun game. It played probably about an hour for two players. And I played probably about an hour and a half to two hours with three and four players. So it worked very, very well. If you like games like Adrenaline, this is going to be one for you. If you like colorful, vivid style arena combat games, you'll enjoy this one as well. It's a pick up and play game. After you played your first game, everything else is gonna go smooth and it's gonna be easier and turns will go by fast. Seven rounds will fly by without you even knowing it. And there's a team variant as well, two versus two that you can play, which is also a lot of fun. Um, but regardless, that's pretty much what I got for you. Quality, design, artwork, all solid, small, minor little things that I, you know, disliked about the graphical design choices, but overall, easy to understand. Uh, I love the gameplay. I think it's a lot of fun. For those of you who like to be mean to each other, do damage, explode things, this feels kind of like a video game attached to a board game or a board game attached to a video, however you want to look at it, because you're constantly blasting and blowing up and respawning and coming back and, and just trying to do as much damage as humanly possible to as many players by getting those knockdowns because the last hit is all that matters. Regardless though, if you're interested in taking a look at the game Slash and Spells, I highly recommend this game. If you like arena combat games and don't mind being a little mean, this was a fun one to play. Thank you guys for watching with our unfiltered gamer board game review for the game Slash and Spells. If you're interested in this video, take a look at the uh, rest of our videos here on YouTube. We make videos just like this one, review videos that show off different types of Kickstarter games, as well as of course we do a live stream every Sunday 6.30 p.m. PST on Facebook and Twitch where we give away games and we also promote promote our Patreon $1 a month. And if you do go into that and donate that, that dollar, you have an opportunity to win a game every week with my little spinny uh, lottery ball thing that we pull out a random ball and you can win a pretty good game, actually. Most of all of our uh, donations go towards that. So take a look at that. And of course, Moonshell, moonshellgame.com, my wife's game. It's a puzzle game. If you're interested in taking a look at the Moonshell, it is a lot of fun. Think of Tetris meets Candy Crush, put it into a board game that involves beautiful imagery and mermaids. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button, the subscribe button, and the bell notification button as well. It greatly helps us out here. We need to greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, as always, I look forward to slashing your spells next time.